Hey, welcome to the edit section. This is going to be kind of fun if, um, well, you consider editing fun. I kind of do. I think it's it's really neat. I like to set challenges and I like to do things and, and make things, you know, a little better than I had hoped in the shoot in, uh, during the edit. So the, the living room was a fairly simple room. We had a big room, so we had a lot of light, had a lot of stuff to play with. But essentially, we were just shooting our ambience and some flashes. So that'll be really easy to put together. The main thing that you need to know is to, to have some sort of experience with masking and layering. Essentially, what that means is you're just putting pictures above each other in Photoshop, and then you're cutting out the parts of the ones that you really like to put it all together. And I think although you may have some understanding of masking and, and layering, you know, there, there, there's a secret hiding within this that a lot of people don't realize. And that is if you have, say, a back room that's yellow or back in here that's yellow or something like that, something that doesn't work in the image that you're making, this is a cool trick to do. Make a virtual copy of that here in Lightroom and then just edit for that one problem area. Layer the two areas, cut that one piece in, and then it's no longer a problem. So that's kind of a cool thing you can do. Anyway, we are going to take a look at and fix the living room, and um, let's get at it. All right, as you recall, when we first did our first three exposures here, um, I have to flash on because I'm a dummy. So we're just going to ignore those first three images. We'll go to this one. Um, I guess I've already done some adjustments. Yeah, because I've edited all these. So I've done some adjustments. What I notice is, as we talked about out there, is a lot of that green right in here. Um, and um, we can generally do a quick neutralization of that by just bringing up some of the magenta. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this up a little bit more because I think um, this is a little dark. Um, but I'm going to bring it up to about there. And I think that's really good. Um, so that's my first base image. Base image. We start with that. Um, and just so that you know, I generally... It's right at about the H of histogram is where that peak is. That's kind of where I generally go with that. Um, our next image. Oh, notice also too, I labeled it green. That's my signal to me in editing when I'm going through, you know, all these, oh yeah, use that one. You can see I've greened a lot of these. Um, my next one is the underexposure and generally what I would use for the window pull. Um, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring the highlights down bring the exposure down a little bit and that looks pretty good. So let's green that. Um, the overexposure I use to fill in, it's going to fill this all in. Um, so I generally go to this normal exposure and then click here and hit previous. So it's copying everything from that old one to the new one. So I've got images that are going to match. Um, and then I just bring down the exposure till I get that kitchen right where I want it. And I also get this right where I want it. So I, those are the, the, the faulty areas of this, right? So I need those up a little bit. There we go. Um, our next image is our first flash. Oh, it's already adjusted. That looks pretty good. Um, you can see, as I said on site, this area needed a little bit more light and that's why we moved the light over there and then this is a little dark um, one thing we can do here too here in Lightroom that I didn't do in the initial edit but I see now I should have done is bring in a little bit of a graduated filter here and just bring that exposure up so we've got a nice even exposure across that whole image that looks pretty good I think um, our next image is moving that light over to here. And my concern was not this blooming here. I don't care about that as much as I just wanted to fill that in. And that's there. And then what I would say about this is to me, it needs a little bit more strength in the blacks, like right in there. 
Um, otherwise, that looks really good. Notice also when we shot these, we set the exposure for those windows. Those windows look really good. I'm not going to do a window pull on this. There's no reason to. Um, and I can tell that just looking at these. And then let's look at our last image. Let's go previous on that. And yeah, that's just overblown a little bit. I don't think I need it. I've got it here if I need it, but I don't think I'm going to need that to build the image with. Um, this is what the final image looks like, just to let you know. Um, and then here is, I think, our final exposure. So let's go back to our first flash exposure and go to this one and just hit previous and copy it across. It's a little overexposed. Uh, to me, that looks a lot better than that. So I'm going to not green, ungreen that. I'm going to green that one. And now we're going to take our first exposure, our base exposure, our highlighted exposure, the room flash, and then the, the cubby hole flash. And I have a shortcut on my keyboard. I hit F10 and that makes it all magically go into uh, Photoshop, which is this program right here. Maybe you've heard of it. It's from Adobe. So here we go. We're opening that. Um, I think it's really cool to have a bunch of actions. Um, my um, F2, as you can see right there, will align all the layers. My F3 will merge all the layers and my F4 will add a, a black mat. And I find those are, are actions that I do all the time. Or in the case of aligning images, I can never remember how, that, how to do that. So um, I get all those images in there. And the first thing I do is I hit F2 to align them. Like I said, I don't know what menu option does this, um, but there we go, we're aligned. Um, okay, so the order that we shot them in, they're stacked like that from the top down. So this first image is our base exposure and then our highlight exposure and then our two flashes. So why don't we bring the base exposure down so it's the base and then do the highlight above that, but let's put a, a black mat on that so that we don't see it. Now we're working with our two flashes. I tend to like in a flash set or an ambient set, I like to have my base image at the bottom of that set and then the things that I fix it with on top. So I reverse that. So essentially we've reversed everything about the, the order that they came in at. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a black mask on that. Um, and then I'm just saving myself a little bit of time later. I need all these flash layers, once they're all edited, I need them to act like a single image. And to do that, I just pull them all down there and put them into a group. I know a lot of people are very anal retentive about naming all these things. Since I do this every day and I'm just, I'm rushing through it, I don't have time to name them. You know, I know the process that I do and I do it this way every single time. So I'm not gonna bother naming all my layers. It just is a waste of time to me. Um, I think I said at one point during the shoot that, you know, having nice rectangular um, openings make real easy mats and let me show you how you just take this and you just go over and you go right up because that's a nice straight line across right to the edge and down and then you, you might have a little trickiness at the bottom and then um i always overshoot that base like that um here's a cool trick you can do if you do that outline first um, and you don't put this black mask on, let's delete that layer mask. And then you hit, um, um, add the mask there. Now you get that masked and you can see that line right here where my mask line was. And I'm okay with that. That's not a big deal. I was expecting that. Um, I just come back up here, get a black paintbrush, reduce it in size. Pretty much all your masking activity, you're going to have a very low flow rate. Right now I'm at 13. And watch, I just paint in there 
and we mask it to the point where you don't even know that there's a, a mat there. I'm gonna just take this down just a little bit because it looks a little flashy. It's okay at this point that it looks flashy because it is, it's all flash. So that's fine. I just want the, the exposure to be fairly even across it. We're going to paint that in by hand. So I'm gonna hit X, which is gonna reverse our black and our white here. And then I'm gonna start painting in this area. Let's go a little bit bigger brush. Um, because all my exposures were set with that window exposure being correct, I can pull this in like that, bring this exposure up, and I don't have to worry about anything about that window. I do see we've got a hot spot here, and I know about that, and we're, we're going to deal with it. We've got a hot spot above the camera. Here's a cool thing too. Hit shift and then hit this mask, and you can see if um, the mask you're working on will help alleviate a problem. It will, right in here, we've got a flashy area there. So let's go ahead, bring a little bit in there and bring that flash down a little bit. And you know, we can tone that a little bit. And you know, even as just a flash image, that's not a bad looking image. Um, let's put a white mask on that folder with all our flash stuff in it. But let's click the eyeball and turn it off. So now we're gonna do roughly the same thing uh, in the ambient layers. So here's, here's another cool trick. We can take this layer mask and delete it and then take the layer mask we've already cut because it's the same image and we hold down the option or I think it's the alt on a PC and just drag this down and then we've made a copy of that same exact mask and that, that actually works pretty good. I think I'm gonna try and see if I can bring in more there. And I can't, and I'm going to hit X so that I'm now painting with black and I'm gonna see if I can take some of this glare out. And uh, there we go. Now, we're going to turn the flash layer back on and then take that layer as a whole and bring it down into the 70s or the 80s, around in there. Just mix them pretty good like that. I like that. Now we've got a white mask on there, so we're going to use a black brush and a pretty darn big one too. And we're gonna start especially targeting the flashy looking areas like right here above. And the more black we put in, the more flash we take out and the more of the ambient we bring in. Um, so see there, that kitchen problem? That's fixed now. This right, um, that hallway, still looks a little flashy. Let me bring in some black and look at how natural that ends up looking. That carpet looks a little flashy. We're going to have a little bit of a flashy look from the doorway anyway, since we've got a giant light that's coming in from that door. Um, but there we go, that, that works pretty good, I think. Overall, that's a really good image. Um, yeah, I think that works really good. So now we're gonna hit Command Save, or Alt Save, Control Save. I don't know, I don't use PC. And we're gonna round trip that thing back and close it. Round trip it back to um, Lightroom. Now, now we're down to one image. Um, I start doing a lot of my corrections here because now we're doing it only on one image. If we had tried to straighten our verticals and things on all the different layers, they stand a lot better chance of not lining up when you're, when you're doing your editing. Now that we're on a single layer, we can line it all up and make it work really good. What I do is I come down here and I use the guided. And um, I've already picked out what, what I'm gonna use. The ideal guided, you put two vertical lines as far to either side as you possibly can. The closer they are to the center, the more exact you have to be and the less that it really helps. The further apart they are, the more it corrects the entire image. So we'll do our first one right down this crack. 
we got to assume the walls at least are straight. So I click it at the top, go to the bottom, and put that one line in. One line won't make a difference. You have to put two lines in for it to start straightening. I'm going to use the side of the fireplace there, and then I drag it to the bottom, and there. Now we're nice, straight, flat, and level. One of the problems I see with this is it is overall a little too bright. So I'm going to start with bringing my highlights down a little bit. And that looks a lot better. But now we've washed the image out, in my opinion. So I'm going to bring the black level up a little bit till we get enough contrast and, and interest in the image to make it look really good. I still see some green up here and a little bit of discoloration there. Um, there are much better, more exacting ways to do this, but this is real estate, so time is of the essence. I come down to the saturation color mixer, click this, go into where I see the discoloration, and I just pull that down till it goes away. And there we go. We've cleaned that up. You know what? Let's turn that off and look out the windows and see how badly it affects the windows. I don't think it, it affects it that badly. I'm just going to leave it in. Um, again, time is really your enemy here. You need to work quick in um, real estate. All right, so here's what I consider a bozo no-no, and that's the edge of this couch. I would care a lot more if this were a final image, but I know that that's all going to get taken out in virtual staging. So I'm probably not going to be as anal retentive about it as I normally am. We've got a TV in it and half a fireplace. Um, I'm not opposed to showing half of an object. It's very obvious what they are. Um, showing more of them is not going to add anything to this image. So I think everything looks pretty good. Let's do a crop on this. And... We don't need this mess. Um, in fact, I almost want to take it all the way out to the wall. I'm going to stay wider because of the fact that we are virtual staging. And I'll probably do a final crop on the final virtual stage. But we've got this stuff hanging down from the top from the chandelier. I do want to get rid of that. So let's go to right about there. And I think that gives us a good image. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks really good. Maybe even lose a little bit more of the ceiling. And then we could come in a little bit more here. Yeah, look at that. See how that line comes right on there, making this a PowerPoint, and that, that other line comes almost right there. That's almost an ideal rule of thirds. So we're going with that bad boy. There we go. Like it, not a lot. All right. So we are going to round. I'm, I'm sorry. I am looking at all the corners and all the sides. I'm looking at everything. That pole dead center. It's the house. Can't do much about it. Um, let's send it back to Photoshop. Oh, here's a really interesting thing. I'm going to screw this up on purpose and show you. Do you know what edit original versus edit a copy means? Okay, if I hit edit original, that means we're round tripping it back to Photoshop with all the original information. And this would be really good. One of the things I did screw up is I would normally, after doing all that, I would come in here and I would use, let's see, if, if we go, yeah, I would use white to bring these down, um, and I didn't do that. Um, go ahead and bring your brush to about the size of the window, go to white, and then we should be able to bring these in a little bit better from the flash exposure. That's what we're trying to do is make the flash exposure show a little bit more and then do that here too it's not much and that's why i didn't um, make a big deal about it but 
There we go. And then we hit save. And now that new change gets sent back to Lightroom and all those straightening things and stuff we did, that all gets done to the new image, not the old one. So anytime you make a mistake, that's what you want to do. You want to send it back. Um, edit in Photoshop, uh, edit original. Okay, now it's round tripped. These are now the darker images, not by much, but they are. Everything's straightened. We've got our crop, everything that we've set. Um, go back to edit in, but now edit with Lightroom adjustments. So now basically what you've done is combine everything to a single layer. And now we're back on one single layer. My final bit is I do a couple of things. Um, I'm not being paid to tell you this. This is what I do. I go into Photoshop AI and I, um, I do my degrain or denoise here at this point. Um, blah, blah, blah. So denoise, add denoise. And then sharpen the subject. I edit that and turn that into sharpen all. And then I do um, a strength way down. I just want a hint. But it pops the image. But just a hint of it. You do too much and it looks gross. So I do that. I would also, at this point, if I had any sensor dust, anything like that, I do all my cleanups here. And then I run the denoise on top of that. I make a copy of it. So in case I have to come back, I can separate these. Now I go to Nick Collections. And there's a couple that I like here a lot. I like Pro Contrast. And this just helps bump up the, the image, I think, and, and pop it. And then the one I like is Light and Dark and Center. And I never know quite where it is. Let's see, Darken, Darken, Light and Center. Um, I don't like it the way it comes in. Um, let's put our center there. And then we can bring this other part up. And I mean, look at that now, how that pops. That just, I think, looks really, really good. We hit apply. Look at the difference that that makes. I think that makes a profound difference. A couple things I'd probably do in my final cleanup. Um, these little sparks of light. I just grab this and take them out. It's not a big deal. Um, one mistake I made in shooting is this trash can. I generally never leave trash cans in, but there it is. All right, so just hit save, send it back to um, Lightroom where it belongs. Uh, and um, there, that's done. Now what I do so that I know that that's a final image, I put a three on that. Let's compare that to what I actually delivered, um, which is this image. Oh, that's the virtual staged image. Okay, let's go back and forth. Yeah, pretty dang close. Maybe a little bit more contrast in what I delivered. Let's pop a little more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, let's go to our next shot. I'm going to move a little faster here. Where are we at time-wise? Wow, 25 minutes into this. Um, all right, so I'm just going to show you that I used this layer. And then... Um, this was my darkened layer, and then um, I made a copy of it. Um, I, I decided I wanted this one for the room because I might darken like that part, but then I made a copy of it and I made these adjustments just for the windows. And then here's um, our first flash, and here's our second flash, and then this would be the flash in the window. So let's go to how we edited that. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one. Um, I'm just gonna go edit original so that you can see my layers um, and I can whip through this a little quicker. 
Um, all right, so here is, notice the little borders around the outside. When I did the align layers, there was some movement here. And that's what you get when all your layers just don't quite align. But it's really important to make them align and then you get rid of those uh, extra marks around the outside when you crop. So anyway, I started with the dark layer because I didn't want problems with the window pull. So rather than, as I generally do, start with my medium exposure, I started with the dark and then I brought in the medium exposure on the walls and things like that. But I left that door on the dark exposure and that way it's going to match a lot easier. Then I brought in the highlights and brought everything up to where I thought it was all even and, and well matched. This is the ambient. We're not going to get a good window pull on this but we are going to be able to use the lower exposures and bring our highlights in everywhere else so that it's not going to look masked, masked in. So that's what we did there. Now we're going up to our flash layers. All right, so there's our base flash. That looks fine. Then I brought in, would be um, just taking out those highlights near the windows and all that so that the window pull would cut in easier. And then I put in a hue saturation layer where I'm pretty sure I probably went into greens. Yeah, that's what I did. Went into greens and brought the greens down. And um, that actually should probably be above there. And then above that even is a, a, a mat where I cut the windows in. And again, it's just a bunch of rectangles. Takes all of a minute to cut those in. But because the window space and the interior is lit to just about the layer of the window um, exterior, it's not gonna show like it's cut in very much. It, it looks natural. Um, so that is pretty much my combined layer um, then as I think I told you when I was shooting this, that fireplace and that I just took out, it doesn't, that's not materially changing the, um, the room. So I, I do that on my own. I just went ahead and did the sharpening on that layer. And then I did the, the Nick effects and maybe bring that down a little bit, but there, that's our final image. And that was pretty easy to do. Let's go to our third image. That's our base image and that's been edited and that looks fine. I mean, that's pretty even all across, except we've got obviously this giant bloom out the window. So what do we do with that? We cut it in with this and we'll combine those two. And that way we've brought, it's still not to a, a window pull level, but it's close enough and it will hide easily. Then there's our overexposure. And I, I think I made this because I was only thinking about pulling in um, those logs from the, the, the fireplace. And then I think I forgot about it while I was editing and I never did. So that was my thought process. And sometimes you forget. And then what is this? This would be our first flash level. And that looks pretty good. Again, this is all blown out. We'll fix that with that. Okay, I'm lost. Did I shoot? Did I shoot two sets? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I moved the camera. That's right. Okay. So those first three, we're not using anyway. But what I said about them counts for the second three. So here's our base image. Here's our um, cut in the window in the ambient so it doesn't look cut in and here's our third for the the fireplace here is a dedicated window pull shot again i'm looking at this and i'm going i just got straight lines here that's going to be so flipping easy to cut i don't even care i want to put that in here is our first flash here's our second flash doesn't look like um, 
um, much of anything. And I think this we used to brighten up this side. So let's see how we put that all together. Edit in Photoshop and edit original so I can show you what I did. All right, let's go back down the list here. Boom, 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 boom. All right, we'll start with just um, the ambience. So again, we start with the darkest layer and we build up from that. I've found that if you start with the medium layer and then you try and cut in the dark layer, the window doesn't look as clean as well as you want it. So start with the dark layer and then bring in everything except that window. And uh, that's pretty much it. It sounds weird, but if you do it this way, it works a lot better than trying the reverse. Just trust me on that. And then we bring in our highlights, which is mainly going to be the right side of the image. Yep. And bring that up so that we're we're even with our ambience all across the, the shot. Perfect. All right, so now, just to show it to you, because it is part of the ambient series, I would have cut my window pole next. That is way too strong a window pole. By the time we're done, it'll work. But that's it, and just so that you can see it. Um, yeah, there's our windows. And then now let's bring in the um, um, the flash. It's at 79% opacity. I'm taking it up to 100 just so that we can talk about it. So this is, um, this should be, shouldn't it? Should it? Should not it be? That should be our flash. That had to be the flash in the window. Perfect. And then um, what we do is we use, you know, that, that evenly lit shot. We only use that to cover up the flash in the window. Everything else is lit with that light coming this way so that we get more dynamics and um, better lighting. So now we bring that in. We can still see it a little bit there. Um, so maybe I didn't edit that quite as good as I could have, but yeah, we just edit that out of there. And look at that flash. Again, we've got a flash that we could almost deliver, just the flash. But um, we combine that with the ambient and we get a much softer look. This is at 100% and I think we ended up, we were at 79, there we go. See, that is looking pretty natural. Now we bring in that window pole, way too strong. So we go on this layer and um, we just bring it down to where it looks right, right about in there. And then, oh, I added another layer. I just brought in some tan. We got a little bit of a glare there. I didn't like it. And I knew that would probably be covered up again in the virtual staging. So I just painted a little tan in there to take that glare out. And let's see, how did I combine it? I used color mode to combine it in so that it still showed the grain of the wood and stuff through, but was not a bright glare. Then uh, press the magic button and combine this all down to one layer. Then we um, denoised it. And then uh, we added the Nick effects, and there we go. As you can see, we didn't really need to pull that, that um, fireplace in. Everything else looks really good. And we just send that back to um, Lightroom. Since I did the Nick uh, denoising and all that in one layer above, and I did it all in one fell swoop pretty much to save time, we would then now in Lightroom do all the straightening and the final bugaboos and all that. There we go. That is how I edited the three images from the living room. And um, just so that you can see them, here's what that ended up looking like once that was virtually staged. 
Um, the second shot looked like that. And there's the virtual stage. And the first shot looked like that. And there's our virtual stage. So awesome. I hope you liked it. And I will see you in the next one. May your next shoot be your best shoot.